Today we're going to talk about generating, uh, calculating rather, volumes of solids of revolution using the cylinder method, also sometimes called cylindrical shells. Uh, last time we'd covered vol generating volumes of solid of revolution by disks, and now we're going to present an alternate different method. Um, as usual, it'll be outlined like this. We'll introduce the general idea, then talk about the method, do a bunch of examples, and then at the very end of this, we will talk about uh, which method to use if you're not told explicitly which one to use. So let's take an idea. Let's uh, just uh, look at what is a cylinder. What's a volume of, rev of what is, yeah, what's a cylinder? So we're going to take this thing and this example, we are going to rotate it around the vertical y-axis here. Um, what we're going to do with the disk method, if we we're going to rotate this thing, rotate this thing around the y-axis, we would ignore this half and we would integrate from zero to two, and we would take this, which would generate a uh, round disk that we calculate the volume of and sum all those up. But for cylindrical shells, instead of slicing in the y direction, we're going to slice in the x direction. So we're going to consider a little slice in the x direction, which we'll call delta x. And uh, well, what would that look like? Well, now we would have this little kind of slice here. And so imagine we take just that slice and we rotate it around the y-axis. Well, the outer part of that slice, okay, so delta x over here on our rotated version, the outer part of that slice is going to have a mirror image outer part of that slice on the other side of the y-axis. And then since we're rotating it around, that's going to give us kind of a, a can looking circle. And the inner part of that slice, we can't see it now, so we'll have to put that in there like that. And then put the other matching inner part of that slice. And then it's going to give us a hollow circular kind of like a can without a top or a bottom. And so we call that a cylindrical shell or a cylinder. And that little cylinder has volume and we can calculate that volume and we'll get into that, but uh, in a bit later. So that's just the general idea of what we're gonna do. We're gonna sum up the volume of these shells to generate the volume of the entire solid of revolution. So let's consider the same slices. Uh, on that last slide, we saw that we we're gonna take a little slice dx here. And uh, if we were gonna take a slice like in this direction uh, for cylinders, well, we saw what would happen with cylinders. We'd get ourselves a nice little cylinder here. So we rotate, we would rotate that around the y-axis. And then that would be a nice hollow cylinder. Now, over here, if we took the same kind of slice with the washer method, well, instead of rotating in this around the vertical axis, we would have to rotate that particular slice around the x-axis. And so if we took the same slice, if we kind of capped it at that two and then rotated it around, we'd get a matching kind of slice here. And we would generate some kind of a hollow, I don't know, maybe it would look something like this. Yeah, we would get, what would it look like? Yeah, we'd get kind of, instead of just one cup, we'd get two solid cups. So that's how the two compares. If you take the same slices, uh, for cylinders, you're going to integrate along the axis that's perpendicular to the slice, whereas for disks, you're going to integrate along the axis that is also perpendicular to the slice. I thought this slide was really clever, but now that I'm seeing it, I, I these words are kind of not very clear. So we're just going to look, leave that picture and say, all right, if you took the same slices, you'd get two different volumes generally with the two different methods. So you just got to make sure you're doing it, setting it up correct. We'll get more examples here. Okay, plowing recklessly forward. So kind of exploring the thickness of one slice, as we saw in the last slide, if we take that little slice, we're going to get a cylinder. And the spoiler image is below, but let's just kind of explore this a little bit. Got yourself your nice cylinder. It's hollow on the inside. <clears throat> so what is, I, all right, so you can kind of imagine that if you cut where it's marked cut here on this image at the bottom, and you unrolled that tube, in particular this tube, think about a toilet paper tube or something. If you cut that and unrolled it, what do you get? You get a flat piece of paper. And what's the volume of this sort of flat rectangular solid? 
Well, volume of a, a flat rectangular solid is volume equals length times width times height. And that brings us to, well, why does it say volume equals two pi r h delta x? Well, in this case, um, ooh, poor choice of variables here. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to use capital letters for this. Volume equals length times width times capital height, because we've already used a little h for something. All right, so length times width. Well, length times width is the area of the flat surface times the height of our surface. Well, height is going to be little h. So that we can replace with little h. That's fairly clear. That's the height of our cylinder over here. Um, but how do they get 2 pi r? Um, When I said height, I'm wrong. I'm making mistakes left and right here. OK, so the height of this thing is not h, but rather this little delta x. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that. We got the height part of ours is delta x, and so that's where that delta x comes from. Well, what about the area of the flat base? So let's use a different color here. Oh, we'll use red. So that's a nice color to use. So let's look at this. What is the area of the face of this thing? Well, the area is the area of this surface. So we got surface area over here. And so what is the area of that surface? Well, that distance is, as you cut it, this line right here. Imagine we cut on this dotted line here. And that dotted line corresponds to this edge. And so what is this that red length that we need? We've got the width. The width is represented by little h over here. So this is our width in the area calculation of that the face of that surface. Now, if you unwrap this thing, the outer edge of our circle is going to correspond to that solid length that I've drawn on the top there. And so what is this? That is the circumference. And if we look back to geometry, the circumference is given by the formula 2 pi of any circle times the radius r. And that's, well, we know the radius r. It's given to us right here. And 2 pi r. So 2 pi r here, that is the area of that surface, 2 pi, uh, or rather the length of, of the top of that surface. So to get the total area, you take that solid length at the top and multiply it by the dashed length of the width, and you get 2 pi r h. And then to get the volume of the overall uh, rectangular solid, you take that length times width, 2 pi r h times our height, which is delta x, and that's how they get the volume of this thing approximated by 2 pi r h delta x. All right, so that idea is written out here. So in general, the volume of one shell since surface area is what we're going to use to approximate volume. Um, as delta x goes to zero, the volume of a single cylinder becomes basically the volume of just an ultra thin piece of paper. What's an infinitely thin cylinder look like? It looks like a piece of paper rolled up, right? Um, as that slice width delta x goes to zero. And so to explain this, let's just draw it again, because I think we had that. It's a very good image on the last slide, but I think it's it's helpful to sort of go through this process on our own of drawing just a real quick cylinder. And then imagine if we took that cylinder and we cut it right here along this solid, well, let's use a different color, along this vertical cut here. And you could probably imagine what's going to happen as we uh, cut that. Well, the, it, the pace of paper that we've rolled up or is going to kind of pop open to the left and to the right. And so I'm going to put little tick marks just on this side. And kind of if you imagine that shell unrolling, well, what it's going to be is it's going to be a rectangular piece of paper that has the same height as our shell. And where is that cut going to be? Uh, well, the cut's going to correspond to this side and this side. 
And since I labeled one with the little hash marks and that's on the right, that I'm gonna imagine that would kind of unroll this way. And I'm sorry, the hash marks would probably be pointing up the way I have it drawn, but I think the idea gets conveyed here. Okay, so just at looking at this, it's, it's a little hard to say, okay, we're gonna approximate volume by area. So we need to know the length times the height of this piece of paper. So what is our height? Well, we're going to call our height height. All right, we're just going to call that H. And we'll get into that very, very shortly on the rest of this slide. But let's look at this part right here. Again, like we said on the last slide, if you imagine cutting this cylinder, that blue, that length is going to correspond to the circumference of our cylinder. And so how do you measure the circumference of a cylinder? Well, you need to know the radius of that cylinder. And then if you have your radius of the cylinder, circumference is going to be 2 pi r, because the circumference is 2 pi r. And when it unrolls, it becomes the top of that piece of paper, the length, as we call it. So that's really where that volume comes from. So let's talk about this height now. What is the height of this particular shell? Well, I think on the first slide, uh, oh yeah, it's right here at the top of the slide. We are gonna rotate y equals x squared about the x or y axis rather. So this red function is y equals x squared. So what is the height of this thing? Height of this thing is this minus this. So to calculate our height of this single shell in general, um, instead of calling this thing dx now, let's just call this an, any arbitrary point x. Uh, if you want to get a little x hat, you could, but I'm just going to call it any arbitrary x along x along the x-axis. We're imagining that that's no longer got width, but it's just an infinitely thin slice there at x. And so what is the height going to be expressed as? Well, so you kind of have a top minus a bottom here. And the top is going to be defined by the line y equals 2 y equals 2. So our top is just going to be 2. We're going to subtract that what away from that. Uh, well, I'll use I'll continue using green here. Or maybe I'll use black. Yeah, black will work. OK, so the bottom, what is, what is this point? So this point right here, another way to hopefully see this is just to write, what's the top of that point? That's x comma 2. So the y, the height, and the in the way as we're looking at it, this vertically is going to be the y coordinate two. So what's this point right down here at the bottom of our slice? Uh, so if we had to write this out in terms, we could write this as x comma y. The y is given as our function f of x equals x squared. So it's x comma x squared, whatever value of x, put an x squared and that'll be your y value. So our bottom of this thing is going to be x squared. So the overall height of our piece of paper is going to be height equals 2 minus x squared. So last but not least, what about radius? What about this radius, radius business? So this cylinder, if we drew it over here in our picture, it would look something like this. And so the radius is going to be defined by what? Well, we could draw it up on the top, and that would be starting at 0 and then going out to wherever our slice started. If you uh, Sometimes I find it helpful to just draw it in the middle, kind of put a little dashed line here and say R, there's our radius. And so I guess I shouldn't have done that in blue because that's what I did it over there. There's our radius. So what is the radius? The radius is defined by what? It's going to be defined by however far over that X slice is. And so in this case, our radius is going to be X. And so if we put all of this together, the volume of this infinitely thin uh, little rectangular solid slice of paper for it, well, that's what we're thinking about it as, is going to be 2 pi times our radius. Well, our radius is x radius. And then our height is 2 minus x squared. All right, so that's the uh, expression for one, one volume of one shell. So the one that, what we haven't talked about yet is our R rather limits of integration. So what do we have? Um, 
Well, with disks, if we were going to go around the x-axis, we would we would go from this point all along the x-axis all the way over to this point or something if we were going to rotate this around the x-axis. We're used to doing the entire shape when it comes to disks. Usually, I use the words usually here because we'll see an example where we do use the entire uh, region, but think about what you would need. Which shells would you need to generate this entire volume. Say you started over here on the far left and you picked this slice right here and that would generate this shell, something like that. And so say so you decide that, okay, here's where we're gonna start integrating and here's where we're gonna end integrating along the x-axis. And every step along the way, you're gonna generate a new shell. You're just gonna keep going. And then when you get over here to this point, you're gonna generate, oh, the exact same shell, right? And so if we were to do that, we would have counted that, that volume twice. So for that reason, in general, if you're rotating about a, the X or Y axis here, when you're using the cylinder method, you start in the center of the shape and you start with this at, z at zero, you're just gonna get kind of a line an infinitely thin shell there. And you're gonna work your way out. As you work your way out, you're gonna generate a shell that's going to give you, uh, it's going to fill in the left side as you go, as you rotate. And then we go up here. And then you just keep going and you're going to slowly fill this thing in. So you're going to start at zero and you're going to integrate to this point. And by the time you get there, you will have generated the entire solid of a revolution. So for this particular problem, we're do we stop? Well, remembering that part of the calculation is this radius. So if we're going to start at zero and go all the way out to here. And each of those individual slices is going to have a radius. And so I'm going to think, OK, where is our radius going to stop? Where does the radius stop? Well, it starts. at x equals zero. Okay, before I say this, the radius is defined by x, right? As we're slicing along in this direction, we're slicing in the x direction, so your radius is gonna be your x step along the way. Okay, so what do we need? We need to figure out this b value, and what does that b value relate to? This point right here, we're trying to find the, the input, the question mark, that gives us the output of two, vertically two. And so that takes us down a little bit of algebra. And so we know that what we want is we want y is equal to 2, and we have it intersecting the function y is equal to x squared, the parabola. Put that together, you have x squared equals 2. Take square root of both sides. Remember, positive or negative, but in this case, we're uh, interested in just the positive case. And so you get x equals square root of 2. So that tells us b is positive square root of 2 and a, where we start integrating, is 0. So we're going to integrate from integrate along the x-axis. And like we talked about last time, sometimes deciding that first can help you tell what variable your all your expressions should be in terms of. So we're going to integrate along the x-axis from 0 to the square root of 2. And so down here, we'll get, hey, for our example, y equals x squared rotated about the y-axis, we're going to integrate over the x-axis from 0 to the square root of 2. So now we're going to set up the integral, put it all together, and uh, on the next slide, we'll calculate it out as our first fully worked example, or maybe I'll start doing it on this slide. So volume equals uh, equals integral from a to b of 2 pi uh, times the radius. There is your circumference uh, times height, and then with respect to x. So we're going to fill in all these pieces. So we're going to go from 0 to square root of 2 for our limits of integration. 2 pi is just 2 pi. Our radius, as we said on the last page is however far along that x-axis you are from your in your uh, mission to go from 0 to root 2. And then that height, 
that height is going to be the very top of the shell, which is always going to be 2 in our case. And the bottom of the shell is going to be defined by our function, which is x squared, so 2 minus x squared dx. So now we've got ourselves a perfectly good little integral. And we'll work this one out in its entirety just for kicks and uh, go from there. So on the next slide, I'm going to take this and I'm going to distribute it out and start the calculation. So uh, equals integral uh, 0 root 2. Multiplying that out is going to give us uh, 4 pi. You could also pull 4 pi to the outside of the integral if you prefer, minus 4 pi x minus 2 pi x to the third dx. And now we integrate that individually. And you're going to get 4 pi x squared over 2 minus 2 pi x to the fourth over 4. Evaluate that from 0 to root 2. Uh, tidy things up as we go. That's 2 pi x squared minus uh, pi over 2 x to the fourth from 0 to root 2. Well, here, since we're plugging in zero to uh, root 2 to 0, so we'll plug in root 2, 2 pi root 2 quantity squared minus pi over 2 root 2 quantity to the fourth minus big parentheses 0 minus 0. And again, like we said last time, be cautious if you're plugging in 0. These two are just powers of 0, so they do go to 0. But if it's a trig function or some other expression, you may have to do a little bit more algebra. Don't just always think it's 0. That's a common mistake. All right, so what do we get here? We get Square root of 2 squared is 2 times 2 gives us 4 pi. And then we got pi over 2. Square root of 2 to the fourth power is 2 times 2 gives us 4. So we get 4 pi minus, that simplifies to 2 pi. 4 pi minus 2 pi gives us that our volume here is 2 pi. All right, so now we've seen an example. We've kind of talked through the, the process a little bit. Let's look at just the method in general. So volumes of solid of revolution, cylindrical shell method. 